Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. We're going to finally start to talk about the topic of equations in algebra. We'll be talking about equations for basically the entire course. This is just an introduction, but it's really important material. Um, I think will make your life so much easier uh, as we go on if I just get a good introduction for you. So here we have the idea of an equation. And I know that you have all heard this. I know that you, some of you are scared of the idea of an equation. Trust me, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, an equation is something in algebra um, that has an equal sign. If you look at the word equation, it means equals. Equals is the first part of the word. So it's basically some math operations, many times with a, a variable involved, that has an equal sign. That's all it means. Equation means it has an equal sign. So pretty simple so far. So to give you some quick examples of that, um, 2 plus 1 equals 3. You all know this, right? Well, this is an equation. It just it means it's something on the left is equal to something on the right. 2 plus 1 is exactly the same thing as 3 of something. I know this is super trivial and super easy for you to understand, but that's the basic idea. Another example would be 3 plus x um, is equal to 4. Now, this is also an equation, but the only difference is we have uh, an unknown quantity here, an unknown variable, right? But there is an equal sign, and that's what makes it an equation. Now, this is a really easy equation to solve. What is the only value of x that's going to work here? x equals 1, because 3 plus 1 is 4. So many times you can look at these simple equations and figure out what value of x is going to work, but as you get into algebra deeper, you're, you're not going to be able to look at them and just quickly get the answer. You'll have to learn to solve the equations, and we'll get to that uh, a lot later. Okay, so what we have next is, I've just introduced the idea of what an equation is. Next thing I want to do is talk to you about the domain of a variable. And in simplest terms, the domain of a variable is the set of numbers um, that the variable can represent. VAR, I'm calling variable, that the variable can represent. Right? Now, many, many, many times we have an equation like, um, you know, x plus 2 is equal to 3 or something, just anything. And we say x can be any number that we want it to be. We just have to figure out which one satisfies the equation. But the domain of a variable is really when you lock it down and you say, okay, these are the numbers that the variable are, is allowed to take on. Right? And so, it's not so important right now, but when we get into more complicated functions and, and, and equations, you'll see that the domain of the variable actually matters. So here I'm going to blow your mind with some, some math stuff here that's going to look a little scary at first, but it's not going to be hard. Let me write something down like this. X, with this weird little symbol, looks kind of like an E. All right? Um, and then I'm going to open curly braces, 0, 1, 2, 3 and I'm going to close the curly braces off. Okay, you'll see this in your book. It scares a lot of students. All it means is that the variable x can represent only these four values, 0, 1, 2, or 3. This is the domain of x. It means, think about when you're, you know, when you're a king or something in a castle. Your domain is your kingdom. That is what you rule. That is what you're in charge of. You, know, you come into my domain, you have to answer to me. I'm the king, right? So the domain of a variable is all the values that it's able to represent. It's its kingdom, right? So in this case, I'm specifying it with these curly braces, which are special symbols. And that just means the numbers inside are the only numbers that x can be. Okay, so we call that the domain, right? In fact, this symbol, this symbol here, this weird looking thing, this means belongs to. X can belong to. And this uh, symbol here, these, this curly brace, this, this means a set of numbers. All right, so the curly braces mean the set of numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3, and this fancy E means belongs to. So it just means X can behave and, and belong and take on those values. So another example might be a uh, different variable, let's say. Let's say the variable A, uh, and we'll put this guy, belongs to the set of numbers, or the domain, 2, 3, 7, 9. If you see something like this, then this means the variable A can only take on the value 2, the value 3, the value 7, the value 9, because it belongs to these set of numbers and only this set of numbers. 
Okay, that's what it is. And when you when you lock down the variable like that to belong to a set like this, that set is called the domain of a variable. Now these variables I've written down that it has a certain domain, but if you don't specify or you don't you don't have any information about the domain, then you can assume the domain to be all numbers. But in, in these problems, we're starting to introduce the math lingo, and so the domain of the number is something that you need to understand. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll up a little bit and solve a problem. Uh, it's going to be a pretty simple problem, but basically we're going to solve a simple equation. We're going to solve this equation um, if x belongs to the set of numbers, or its domain, is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that means x can only take on those values. That is the domain of x. So I'll write that down, domain. So if you ever see something on a test, hey, the domain of a variable is 0, 1, and 2. That just means, hey, it can only take those values. That's all it means. Now the equation that we're actually going to solve is going to be x plus 5 is equal to 9. How do we solve it? Okay, what is the value of x that works? Now I know that you can all look at this and you can figure out what goes in the spot, but how do we solve it when x is a value, can only take on these values? How do you show your work in a math class? That's what we're going to focus on here. So the way I suggest doing it is making a table. You're going to have values of x, and then you're going to have the equation x plus 5 is equal to 9. Right? And so you can make a little table here. Now x is given as only having those values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It can't be 6. It can't be negative 2. We'll talk about negative numbers later. It can't be 17. x literally only can take these values because I've told you this. If I didn't tell you that x can only contain these values, then you would just assume that x could be any number. But now I'm locking it down for you. So we just create a little table, and we start substituting stuff in. What if we put the number 0 in for x? x can be 0, right? So 0 plus 5. I'm going to put equal with a question mark 9. And you have to answer, ask yourself, is 0 plus 5 equal 9? Well, uh, 0 plus 5 would be 5. Uh, equal question mark 9? No. So that value of x does not work. It doesn't satisfy this equation. What if we put the number 1 in? 1 plus 5 equals question mark 9. Well, 1 plus 5 is 6 equal question mark 9, no. I think you see where we're going with this, so I'm just going to kind of cruise down here. 2 plus 5 equal question mark 9, 7 equal question mark 9, no. 3 plus 5 equals question mark 9, 8 equals question mark 9, no. And finally, 4 plus 5 equals question mark 9. What do you think is going to happen here? 9 is equal question mark 9? Well, yes, it actually does work that time. So it looks like that value can work. And then 5 plus 5 equals question mark 9. 10 equals question mark 9. No. So it looks like what we did is we took every possible value of x in its domain, in other words, every possible value of x that it could represent, and we calculated what would happen if we put it in there, and we were looking to see if it's equal to 9, because that's what the equation is. So no, 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 yes, no. So the only value of x that works is x is equal to 4. So you can write that as x is equal to 4. That's how I would typically write it. But since we're talking about domains, another way you can write it is you can say x is equal to the set of numbers only containing the number 4. You can write it either way. All right. This is more of the mathematical way to write it, but in practice you just pretty much say x is equal to 4. This is just saying, hey, the set of numbers the only, there's only one in there called the number 4. That's what x can be equal to. That's the only value of x that works in this equation. And of course, this equation was so simple, you can look at it and tell that just by looking at it. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get some additional um, practice with it, and we'll get to, to some more complicated equations. And right now, we're just introducing the basic idea. I promise you we will solve equations eventually that you will not be able to look at and just solve them. That's why we're building this foundational stuff right now so that you know what you're doing. When you get to the more complicated problems, it will not be hard for you. So follow me on to the next lesson now.